Hi, and welcome to Ultralight, a world journey. The first trip consists of 14 days of traveling, touching 14 European cities. It is a big circle, a big hug to Europe. I take off from Milan, Italy, where I'm from, aboard the advanced ultralight aircraft Sparviero, made by Promac in Apulia, Italy. The Sparviero is an 80 horsepower, very efficient airplane. The first country across is France, then Spain, then France again, United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden, Germany, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Slovenia, and finally back to Italy. The trip was sponsored by Bosi Aviation Headphones as main sponsor. This kind of traveling allows for maximum flexibility as you can take off whenever you want and go wherever you wish. You can choose where to fly in order to view specific points of interest and the altitude is low enough to see all the details and enjoy breathtaking scenery.
Did you know that Barcelona is the largest city on the Mediterranean Sea? If everything had gone according to Gustave Eiffel's initial plan, Paris' most famous landmark would now be in Barcelona. Unfortunately, Spain rejected the architect's project, deciding that it was too radical and did not fit the city's aesthetics. Barcelona plays host to the biggest and busiest cruise port in Europe, has the largest football stadium in Europe and the second in the world. More than 10% of the city is covered by urban parks, 68 in total. Although world-famous flamenco artists can be seen regularly performing in venues across Barcelona, this traditional Spanish art form is not so much appreciated by Catalans who have their own native dance, the Sardana. As for bullfighting, this was banned in Catalonia in 2010. Hundred and eighty kilometers of bike lanes, along with one of the most successful bike sharing programs in the world, make the Catalan capital one of the most bike friendly cities in the world. Off, you send a flight plan to the local aviation authority, which can be done via iPad. It informs the control towers of your desired path. Immediately after takeoff, and within half an hour of the takeoff time indicated on the flight plan, you can contact the controller. The procedure for flying safely is always aviate, navigate, communicate. First, we make sure we're in control of the aircraft and all the parameters of the instruments are within the regular limits. We navigate following the instructions provided by the controller or according to our flight plan. Then we switch from the local airport controller to the larger area controller. We communicate who we are, where we are, where we are going, and what we want to do. Yeah, no problem, sir. Just to inform you, there is a traffic uh, straight ahead, uh, PA32.
249, vous pouvez afficher 7000 et quitter ma fréquence. Did you know that Paris has the most popular museum on the planet, the Louvre? Believe it or not, Paris' most iconic building was only meant to be a temporary monument. The Tour Eiffel was France's way of demonstrating its superior technological and construction skills when it was constructed in 1889 for the World Expo. Residents and senior figures protested against it, and the media called it a useless monstrosity. You might already know that New York's Lady Liberty was a gift from the French. What you might not know is that there is a miniature version of it in Paris, facing the larger counterpart, symbolizing the friendship between France and the US. Despite London's reputation for having near-continuous rain, the city actually receives less rainfall per year on average than other popular destinations, such as Rome, Toulouse, Naples, Sydney or New York City. It's just lighter rain and more frequent. An amazing fact is that around 10,000 foxes live in London. These elusive urban animals live underground underneath sheds, on railway embankments, among tree roots, in bushes, and even in trees. The Big Ben is actually not the name of the iconic tower in London. Initially, the tower of the Palace of Westminster was simply known as the Clock Tower. However, the famous landmark's name was changed in 2012 in honor of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Big Ben has always just been the name for the bell inside the tower. Perhaps the most difficult job in the world is being a black cab driver in London. 
all black cab drivers in London must pass the extremely difficult geography test, known ominously as the knowledge. It requires you to learn 320 basic routes, all 25,000 streets within these routes, and 20,000 landmarks within a six-mile radius of Charing Cross. It is thought to take between two and four years to learn all this information. Using the iPad and the onboard GPS navigator, I can see the no-flight zones and the required minimum or maximum altitudes in specific areas. The radio frequencies to use with specific control towers. Flight controllers keep track of my flight, receiving the signal from the airplane's transponder. Each controller will assign me a specific transponder code, called SQUAWK, to enter inside the transponder, inside the aircraft and then I'll appear on their radar. Sometimes you have to follow specific VFR routes, but most of the time you're allowed to go from point to point.
often called the Venice of the North, Amsterdam boasts over 165 canals, about 15 more than Venice. Amsterdam, and even half of the Netherlands, lies below sea level. About 70% of citizens are believed to use their bike daily. Floating in the canals of Amsterdam are over 2,500 houseboats, which have become somewhat of an icon of the city. Many of them have been converted into hotels or B&Bs. For a city with the reputation of anything goes, Amsterdam is actually among the safest cities in the world. The Heineken Brewery was established in Amsterdam in 1864, and today Heineken is one of the three largest beer producers in the world. up at 7 a.m. By 9, I am at the airport or airfield. No security checks, waiting lines. I can take off right away. I usually travel for two to three hours to the next country and land in a small airport close to the main city, and then catch a subway or a bus to reach the city center, usually an hour after landing. Then I act as a perfect tourist walking as much as I can to the main attractions or visiting good friends spread all over Europe. According to my smartwatch, I totaled 230 kilometers of walking during this trip. In 1416, Copenhagen became the capital not just of Denmark, but of Norway and Sweden as well. The three countries together formed the Kalmar Union, which lasted for 150 years, as an alliance against German expansion until 1523, when Sweden decided to break away. Copenhageners loved their bicycles. More than half of the city residents, from hourly workers to members of the parliament, commute by bike along Copenhagen's 250 miles of bike lanes. Copenhagen is one of the greenest cities in the world, with plans to be carbon neutral by 2025. In 2000, engineers completed the 10-mile-long Oresund Bridge, connecting Copenhagen to Malmo, Sweden. 
The lively Tivoli Gardens amusement park, built in 1843, served as an inspiration for Disneyland. When Walt Disney visited in 1951, he spent hours jotting down notes about everything from the rides to the food, to the lush gardens. When I get to the city center, I use the Booking.com app. And because I look for a hotel the same day, I get amazing discounts, often up to 70% off the regular price.
Berlin has over 180 kilometers of navigable waterways. If you'd like, you can spend hours and hours going around town by boat. The TV tower around the Alexanderplatz is the tallest structure in Germany, at 368 meters high. The Berlin Zoo is not only the most visited zoo in Europe, but also hosts 1,380 different animal species and over 18,662 animals. The zoo is said to have the largest stock of animals in the world. Berlin is considered by many as Germany's greenest city, with over 44% of its area made of waterways, woods, rivers and green areas. With almost 200 museums, Berlin is said to have more museums than rainy days. Berlin is home to the longest open-air gallery in the world. With a little over 1.3 kilometers, the East Side Gallery showcases over 100 murals from artists all over the world. Did you know that there are nine castles in Berlin? The whole trip is flown at an average altitude of 2,000 feet and always in contact with control towers, except for a couple of hours in France and Germany where area information controllers took some time off. Because this is an ultralight airplane, I had to previously obtain written permits to overfly territories from the aviation authorities of Spain, the UK, Denmark, Hungary and Slovenia. All the other countries were fine without permits.
Prague is home to the largest castle in the world. Dating back to the 9th century, Prague Castle spans an impressive 18 acres and is home to stunning cathedrals, chapels, royal palaces and gorgeous ornamental gardens. The members of the Rolling Stones liked the Prague Castle so much that they wanted to pay to make it more beautiful at night. The band members offered to pay for the night lighting for the castle. So, $32,000 later, their stage light technician created the lighting of the castle, still in use today. Budapest, the capital of Hungary, was founded in 1873 by the merger of three cities, Buda, Obuda and Pest. Today, Buda is usually associated with the stately quarters and high class. Pest is where you find the largest part of the population and the so-called urban living. Budapest is the thermal bath capital of the world. Underneath the city is a massive reserve of spring water, that produces 70 million liters of thermal water a day. Rubik, the inventor of the famous Rubik cube, was born in Budapest, as was Biro, the inventor of the Biro pen. The autopilot is very useful and allows you to dedicate yourself to communications. 
taking notes and taking pictures. I really enjoy listening to music and I can finally do that while I'm flying with the new Bose headphones. Inside, the airplane is pretty noisy, but the amazing active control reduction system brings the noise down to almost zero. You can easily even make phone calls. When you fly by yourself, it's a mix of emotions. Amazement for the creation, excitement for the feeling of freedom that flying gives, gratitude to be alive, slight but constant awe as you are responsible for the safety of your life and of the ones living below you. 3000 approaching uh, Papa Quebec uh, Sierra Whiskey 2 at uh, 3000. Uh, confirm you have me on uh, radar, uh, clock 4227. Any Alpha 249 or ASA, uh, 3000 feet. Meeting so many different cultures and people makes you appreciate human nature and the creativity with which lifestyles were chosen. There's no perfect place, but every place is special and unique. There are 177 canals in Venice. These are the main transportation and communication routes. All the buildings have their entrance gates on the canal side. The Grand Canal is Venice's most famous canal, which splits the city in two. Venice was once a country, a republic in its own right. It was once one of the most powerful maritime powers ever. 
Its wealth and prestige came from its trade links across the Adriatic and the Mediterranean seas. Venice is home to the first ever casino. The first European gambling house was founded in Venice in 1638. It was set up by Venice Great Council to try to control illegal gambling during the carnival season. Alfa 2 for 9 in lead, Roger, prefer runway 05, line up in take off at home, discretion, wind calm. Ciao, buonasera. 426, 